Let's hit it. and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation as usual as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about Hi, everyone. Welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I hope you enjoyed our opening music. It's called Clarion Call by the Mark Arneson Band. And if you do like it, you can go ahead and download that on any of your favorite music platforms. For those of you that are new to our show, Alzheimer Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. And we like to interview people all around the world because we know we can all make a difference together. So if you're interested in being a guest on our show, please reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. Now, before I introduce you to our guest today, I always like to give a few shout outs and I have to start with Dementia Map. Dementia Map is a global resource directory that we just launched. It has lots of great resources and many more to come. So go to DementiaMap.com. There you'll be able to find the Memory Cafe directory, Coral Health, which has uh, two apps you can download for free. Uh, You will find things like Zinnia TV and Saltbox TV, so much more. Uh, There's just lots and lots of great information. We have about 150 categories that you can choose from. And there you will also find the My Improvement Network, who we're going to be talking with today, and their program called Rita. Now, in addition, I want to shout out to Artist Senior Living. They are sponsoring an event I'll be doing on August 10th from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, that is Eastern Time. And the topic is Conscious Compassionate Care for the care partner. I also want to give a shout out to Brookdale uh, North Oaks here in Minnesota. We do a caregiver support group on the last Wednesday of each month from 10 to 11 Central. And then also to Arthur Senior Living, where we do a memory cafe, which is for people with dementia and their care partner that we do virtually. And that is from one to three central time on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month. Uh, Coming up in November on the second, Dementia Research Charity Brace is having a conference called Together for Dementia. And you can register for that. You can find information about all of these on alzheimerspeaks.com. Last, I'm going to give a shout out to the Brain Donor Project. They need brains, guys. They need healthy brains as well as those that are experiencing some neurological issues. So check out the braindonorproject.org. We're going to hear from the Foot Bar Walker, and then we'll be right back. Introducing the life-changing Foot Bar Walker. I'm Peggy from Danville, Kentucky, and I'm 91 years old. The Foot Bar Walker revolutionized my care of George. It absolutely benefits the patient and the caregiver both, and that's the beauty of it. It's so easy to use. It folds up just like a dream. I got it in and out of the car without any effort at all. The saving that I made from having to put him in a nursing home came to about $192,000. Does someone you love use a walker? Do they struggle? to get up from a seated position? Are you a caregiver dealing with physical pain and stress as you help your patient? The Foot Bar Walker was designed to assist not only the patient, but also the caregiver. Patients have more control standing up and no lifting from the caregiver is required. See how it works at thefootbarwalker.com. That's thefootbarwalker.com. Peggy, would you recommend the Foot Bar Walker? Do I ever? I would not be in the health that I'm in today at this age had it not been for the Foot Bar Walker. Well, let me go ahead and introduce our guest today. We have Mike Hamilton, 
who has been working with the UK's National Health Service in technology and supplier capacity for over 16 years. And for the majority of those years, he has been working with finance and operations departments supporting the costing and commissioning of services, business intelligence, and waitlist management and capacity and demand planning. All of these services directly affect patient care. And Mike's passion is to not only improve patient care via the improvements in services and financial performance, but also by supporting frontline staff to deliver a higher quality of person-centered care by using alternative therapeutic and patient experience interventions alongside traditional clinical interventions. Having successfully led his last company to um, a successful acquisition, Mike set up a business consulting firm, and it was in this role that he was introduced to the CEO of My Improvement Network, where it was clear to see that his passion was going to be something he could help deliver at scale. So Mike joined that team in April of 2020. Well, Mike, I am so thrilled to have you with us today. I can't wait to learn about what all you're doing. But before I kind of go down that line of questioning, I always like to ask every one of my guests if they've been personally touched by dementia or uh, in their own family or circle of friends. Well, absolutely. Um, Indirectly uh, is the answer to that. Um, my uh, mum, um, whilst doesn't have uh, dementia, uh, she was sectioned uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and it's still undiagnosed. It's a functional mental health issue. Uh, so it's up there with complex conditions like dementia. Uh, and she's been in and out of uh, health and social care, or the health and social care system in, in the NHS in the UK uh, for, as I said, 10 years. And it's... Uh, it's been challenging to say the least because it's not too dissimilar to um, dementia in that you, in one way or another, you lose that individual. Um, uh, as my father once said, um, it's like losing someone to death, but they haven't died, but you're mourning for them. So it's uh, it's been very challenging for us as a family. Uh, it, it does make me realise uh, what an impact dementia has because it's not too dissimilar. Um, so that's been quite a challenge and it links in with my professional life as well, which we'll talk about. Um, and then uh, on, a, on, on a different um, subject, it's more related to a good friend of mine. Um, my good friend, Charles Blackwell, he's, um, his father uh, has been experiencing Alzheimer's. Uh, or living with Alzheimer's and um, it's been a real challenge for the family um, it's been a challenge for the friends as well and particularly his wife uh, he's now in a uh, sheltered accommodation uh, in a care home he's very happy there um, but uh, I, I can't talk uh, with any evidence because I've not been involved in it myself but according to his wife uh, Joe, it was a, a real challenge um, and a heartbreaking challenge because at some point you can't um, you can't look after them as much as you would want to. Uh, and one of the interesting things that Charlie uh, told me uh, about when he went to go and visit or has visited his father is the difficulty to have a conversation, um, which is really interesting because it's exactly the same for me as well. It's you don't know where to start. Um, you. The conversations that you would have had when uh, they were <clears throat> themselves uh, is it, you just can't have those same conversations. They either don't remember it, uh, or if they do, they want to divert and, and deviate away from it. So, um, yeah, both those two incidences or examples are of how I've come uh, into contact with with dementia, functional mental health, Alzheimer's, and so on. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you uh, telling us about that. Let's talk about Rita. Um, I've heard a lot about it, um, but I don't know near as much as I'd like. So tell us what Rita stands for and uh, what it's all about. Sure. So um, I mentioned earlier on that uh, um, the, the personal um, uh, situation with myself and my family uh, has uh, influenced my 
uh, decisions career-wise in recent years and uh, and when I was introduced to Rita and my improvement network which uh, which I uh, am a director of I um, it, it resonated with me significantly um, for two reasons one was more to do with my previous professional life and the other was the very personal agenda with my mum and I remember when I first saw Rita uh, I was uh, I was quite blown away with the concept of what it is so for for, for many people they always ask who is Rita <laughs> what is Rita uh, and Rita stands for reminiscence interactive therapy activities hence the name uh, the acronym Rita um, and it's a digital touchscreen uh, solution uh, that's primary purpose is to support uh, the elderly, uh, people uh, experiencing memory impairments, um, functional mental health issues, acute brain injuries. And it's really there as a platform, a portal to provide um, appropriate distraction, appropriate therapeutic activities uh, in, in what can be quite a stressful environment, both at home and obviously in, in the professional setting, whether it's acute hospitals or, or care homes, sheltered accommodation and so on. Um, it's, it's quite unique in that uh, it contains all of the content out of the box. So everything is preloaded. So uh, to give you a few examples of the type of content you would expect in there, you've got uh, reminiscence images, thousands of reminiscence images in different categories. You've got uh, TV clips, um, you've got movies, uh, you've got games. Uh, there's a significant amount of content in there. Um, and I don't know whether it's the same in the US, but in our healthcare facilities and, and institutions, networking and connect uh, connectivity to the internet, Wi-Fi is notoriously bad. So uh, we, uh, before my time, in, in fairness, the company wanted to ensure that whatever was uh, on offer wasn't going to be impacted by not being able to connect to the, uh, to the web. So everything is contained on a large 24 inch monitor that comes on a trolley uh, and could be wheeled around acute, uh, acute wards in hospitals, uh, elderly care wards, dementia wards, and also care homes and also hospices. Um, and it will not be affected by any outages uh, with Wi-Fi. So you can imagine if you're uh, an occupational therapist or a clinician, a nurse, and you're having a one-to-one -one with quite complex individual uh, who may have been distressed uh, and agitated, the last thing that you want is to be uh, to get that buffering wheel of death as i term it you know when you, you we've all been there when we're watching something on youtube or we're watching tv on the internet and we we have that buffering wheel it could not be more um frustrating for the individuals that you're having the one-to-one -one with and the staff as well so that's why we decided that everything would be contained on these devices they're android devices um and portable so I mentioned the 24 inch uh, monitor, which comes on a trolley. We also have a 10 inch tablet, which gets termed uh, baby Rita. Uh, so that's the, uh, the device that tends to be used for one-to-ones. But one of the most unique features of uh, the technology in my viewpoint uh, is its uh, person-centered care approach. So every device uh, has up to uh, 400 individual profiles that could be set up on the device. And what that means is that you can start to store and capture very magic moments, uh, content, whether it's images, uh, TV shows that they used to watch, um, films, whatever it may be, you can capture that as a favourite for the individual against their profile. As well as that, you can store uh, life story work. So when people, we, we've got a big thing happening over here with uh, life stories, producing life stories for individuals, which is extremely therapeutic for the service users, uh, extre extremely useful for staff and family members uh, to be involved in that. So everything can be saved uh, to the profile as well. Um, but the beauty of having that kind of capability, certainly in a professional uh, environment, is it will be the same in the US that uh, health and social care is very much based on uh, shift-based patterns. 
So what you're going to see uh, in, in many instances is someone potentially doing a lovely one-to-one -one or having a lovely one-to-one -one with an individual where they've captured maybe a music track that they used to dance with their partner to um, uh, in the 40s or 50s, for argument's sake. Um, they can save that to the profile, but most importantly, you're able to store a note to explain why it resonated. Uh, and that's extremely powerful for the individual, um, uh, the care professional to, to, to use that content again, but it's even more powerful for continuity of care. So when you've got other staff members coming on other shifts or you have agency workers come in, they can use that content and learn more about the individual uh, prior to having that one-to-one -one or, uh, or um, you know, during a one-to-one. -one. Um, and anyone that's dealt with someone um, or, or uh, been involved with someone that is experiencing dementia or has a functional mental health uh, illness, they will be very aware that they're a big fan of familiarity and consistency. And when uh, they're presented with the opposite of that, unfamiliar environments, unfamiliar people, um, uh, stressful uh, situations, they're, they get agitated extremely quickly and get distressed uh, very quickly. So having something like Rita to be able to uh, come to, to have available uh, to you as a, an alternative intervention is a very, very powerful um, uh, a powerful offering really and that that I think is probably the most uh, unique feature of Rita. Well I love that and I have a question so with images so if, if I took a photo I can just upload that I, we don't we don't have to just use the photos that are automatically in Rita everybody can add different ones okay and then um, I love the the life story um, aspect of that. I think that that is um, really, really important. And then, you know, when, when staff add something and, and add a note, does it all pop up for the next shift so that they know something new was added or does that just get too cumbersome? Because I think in some ways that would be kind of a, a nice feature, but maybe it would just be too much too. But I, I know that those things can kind of, you know, when you, when you have a precious moment with somebody a lot of times I know here in the US, that doesn't get passed on because everybody's focusing on what didn't happen so good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it's, a, it's actually a nice idea and, and worth considering. It's not something we have at the moment. Ultimately, the facilities that we uh, have Rita in at the moment are dealing with quite a significant amount of either residents or care homes or uh, hospital patients. Um, and as a consequence, they'll be shifting between uh, patients and residents quite, um, quite frequently. What we are recommending to, um, to handle that kind of situation is to suggest to facilities and management of facilities that they add a standard operating procedure to the way they uh, deliver their service, uh, which would in involve RITA. So, to give you a very good example, and it's a personal one, it's a, an example of, of um, my mum or with my mum. So I went to visit my mum a couple of years ago um, and I was sat there with her and she was relatively calm in that situation, um, thankfully. Um, and whilst I was with her, an agency nurse came in to give her a medication. Uh, now, they must have been low on staff that particular day, so they had an agency worker come in, and she was lovely. Do not get me wrong, I'm not criticising her in any shape or form. She was a lovely lady, she meant well, but she was like a bull in a china shop. And what I mean by that, she came in and she went, hi Elizabeth, how are you doing? I've come to give you medication and so on. My mum knew her, didn't know her from Adam. She didn't know her. And of course, that sparked uh, a reaction, and that reaction ended up being quite... Um, uh, not ferocious, that's an over, uh, overstatement, but she wasn't happy, let's put it that way. Uh, so she was telling this lady to go away in, in, uh, in a number of different ways. Um, and she was getting quite agitated physically as well. And she has a stoma and, and you know, when she gets really um, uh, physical, it can lead to all kinds of other complications. So thankfully I was there to calm the situation down. Um, but, um, one thing I learned from that is how useful something like that, uh, something like Rita, should I say, would be useful in that situation if I weren't to be there. Because in all likelihood, if my mum had reacted in that way and continued to react in that way when the agency worker came in without me there, 
there is a very, very strong possibility she would have been given a chemical restraint, some kind of antipsychotic or, or a, 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 um, a relaxant drug or whatever it may be, um, which is a big no-no in my book. Always, you know, it's the first port of call you go to when you're experiencing an issue if you don't have any other interventions to use. The beauty of Rita is it is, it's an alternative intervention. And we are witnessing across all of the settings that we work with a noticeable reduction in the use of antipsychotic medication and sleeping medication. So if you look at my mum's situation there, if I wasn't there, they could have had a standard operating procedure where all staff, when they're doing the medications rounds, have a baby reader with them at all times, where they can access the profile of the individual, preferably before they go in to visit them, uh, before they go in to see them. So they know a bit about that individual uh, more than they would have done uh, without it. But worst case scenario, they have it on them at the point of an escalation in behaviour. And at that point, they can go into the profile of the individual uh, and, and start to look for content that, uh, that's worked with them previously. But most importantly, have something to talk to them about as well, not just have the image or the TV clip or, or, or uh, the music track. Um, so in answer to your question, <laughs> it's not there yet, but we do recommend having a standard operating procedure to have uh, reads are at disposal, at their disposal uh, when necessary. Well, that just makes so much sense. I think of my mom, my mom lived with dementia for 30 years and 14 of that, she was in a nursing home. And, you know, I just think if she would have had a cue even for medications, like with a favorite song, just to hear that. I mean, music just always lit her up, got her in a good mood and she was pretty cooperative. Um, and like you said, the, the woman, the staff person was very nice. But it, it was just that whole unknown factor, what's going on in a different environment. So I, I can see where, where Rita would be extremely, extremely helpful. And when you're trying to reduce those reactions and keep people calm and have a creative, joyful um, environment for them, it just makes sense. Now, I want to ask you, um, are you just in the UK or can people in the US purchase this as well? Well, it's interesting you say that because at the moment um, we are having uh, conversations with uh, some parties in the US uh, to to bring a US version uh, to the States. Um, the version we have at the moment is perfectly uh, uh, set up to be able to be uh, replicated in the US. Um, the, the biggest thing for us is obviously making sure that the content uh, is appropriate to the US market. Um, so obviously our TV clips, which have uh, Morecambe and Wise and Dad's Army, if anyone's seen that on BBC, uh, the BBC over in the US before, uh, we've got loads of those, but those won't quite hit the mark with the US market. So we'd need to be talking to our media vendors, our media partners to, uh, to, to create some content that's going to be uh, appropriate for the, the US market. But the whole concept of Rita will fit incredibly well. Uh, to the US market and and as I said earlier on it it fits every single uh, setting you could imagine so in someone's uh, home for people who are caring for the family at home to um, uh, acute hospitals mental health hospitals community hospitals uh, hospices day day centers uh, Rita's e even used in um, uh, two libraries in um, in East Yorkshire over here in the UK, their local authority, their local government had bought it, uh, Rita, to enable um, carers in the community to be able to drop into the library and use Rita with their family members or the person that they're caring for, which is a really nice touch. So it really can uh, be uh, be um, provided in in a number of different settings and very well. I even think, um, and, and this might be a stretch in some people's eyes, but even like with the police, you know, when they find a missing person or they get called to a situation and people don't really know what they're dealing with, to be able to have a tool like that to calm them down while they're figuring out, you know, what all is, is going on. Uh, I, I think it's endless in terms of how, how a tool like this could be used and uh, family commercially uh, the whole the whole nine yards. So kudos to that. How did you um, get involved with Rita and the, the My Improvement Network? And what exactly is the My Improvement Network? We should probably start there. So My Improvement Network was um, uh, co uh, was founded, should I say, by uh, by a colleague of mine. 
and um, it was founded off the base uh, off off the back of, of an, a, a family personal experience. So his father um, had visited a good friend of his. I think they, he may have even been an uncle actually in a care home. And incidentally, that care home is owned by the same company that my mum's care home is owned by. Um, now, um, when he went to go and visit this gentleman, he was quite frankly shocked. Um, and he was shocked by the lack of engagement, activity, stimulation that he could see in the care home. Um, he actually found his friend uh, huddled up in a corner um, and he was obviously dosed up on, on medications. Uh, he wasn't quite himself, and he wasn't quite himself anyway because he had dementia, but it was quite obvious that he was dosed up on medication. Uh, and it quite frankly shocked him. Uh, and um, he went back to see his son um, and said, this is ridiculous. There must be another way of handling this. Uh, there must be a, a better way. Uh, and my colleague, um, had been a successful businessman in his own right uh, previously, uh, been quite successful financially. And he said, well, I'm going to find a better way. <laughs> I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to work with my team. Uh, and uh, he, he already had a, a developer working with him on, on something else. And they spent the next three or four years um, doing research, working with universities, working with clinicians to come up with something that would would meet the needs of the market uh, and deliver um, what was missing. Uh, and that's where Rita was born. And, and it wasn't actually called Rita in those days. It was called um, My Life Software was the first name. Uh, then it was called DRTS, Digital Reminiscence Therapy System. Um, and it was actually termed Rita by one of our longstanding customers, a hospital in the northeast of England. Uh, that wanted to give the technology, the digital technology, a persona. And the reason why they wanted to give it a persona is because whether we like it or not, service users and staff especially can be very daunted by technology, no matter how simple it is to use. So they called it Rita. Rita became a she. We have Mummy Rita and Baby Rita. And Rita's become a part of the furniture in many organisations. She's a member of the team that they can call upon to offer them uh, support in what can be an extremely challenging and stressful environment. Um, so my improvement was started then. Uh, we also have um, a couple of uh, sister companies um, and one of them is called MyQual, My Quality of Life, that delivers support for uh, people uh, living with learning difficulties uh, from children to adults. Um, we've just launched a new uh, assistive living monitoring solution uh, that's, uh, that's literally just being rolled out into a few organizations as we speak, which basically is um, the ability to monitor um, people who need to be monitored, but not invasively. So rather than using CCTV cameras and, and, uh, and microphones, we use quite innovative technologies such as heat signature technology to monitor where people in a, are in a room, audio waves to, to hear when people are shouting, uh, wearables, and all of this can be done re remotely on a cloud or in uh, a sheltered accommodation where management reside in another room where they can see things on a screen, but again, not uh, invasively through CCTV and so on. So that's quite exciting. And then another part of the business that we have as well is called uh, Response Time. Uh, and that is uh, something we're piloting at the moment. It's a very, again, using the same type of technology, it's uh, falls prevention technology. So the whole concept behind it is to monitor beds that are high risk of uh, people falling. So those that are uh, prone to wandering with purpose and so on and dementia pa patients and residents are, uh, are, are within that category. And what it does is it alerts the nursing staff or the management when a patient or a resident is attempting to get out of the bed so they can get to them before they do fall. Because at the moment, uh, there's a lot of pressure sensor mats and all kinds of things which alert you to a patient already on the floor, which to be, to be frank is a little too late in, in, our, in our opinion. So that's kind of the, 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 the overarching business. And it's all stemmed from a personal situation and someone wanting to fix a problem that needed fixing, which is quite inspirational, really. It really is. Um, I, 
so much packed in there. I have so much to say. Um, I love the Rita persona because it is a, it's simple to say, it's not scary. And really it, it sounds like Rita's just part of the family. I, and to me, uh, that makes a huge, huge difference. So I, I think, you know, everything that you did there in terms of the name change made a lot, a lot of sense. And I guess more comfortable and less angst in terms of working with it or, or feeling like it's task oriented. It really is a friend at hand, which is pretty cool. Your other programs, my qual with the, the learning um, deficits, I think is great. I think it's really interesting what you're doing with the assisted living in terms of being able to monitor, but not invasively. We have some of that here in the States, but a lot of it is kind of piecemeal in terms of, well, we can try this and we can try that. So it's kind of neat, you know, you're pulling pulling things together there. And, um, and then with the response time, I think it's critical because we all know a fall, sometimes there's no going back and um, that can change someone's health status so quickly. And I think that that is really misunderstood by a lot of families, how significant and important keeping them safe is and, and avoiding those falls on, on so many different levels. So kudos uh, to your company. It's, uh, it's really, really neat what you're doing. I, I want to dive a little bit deeper in terms of what are some of your thoughts about the needs in terms of modern healthcare and, and how we need to change to get best outcomes for, for patients. And, you know, it sounds like you're doing a lot with that. And I love that it was attached to a personal story. And I think this is kind of common too, that when you have a personal story, your mind easily expands to see other people's needs, not just yours. And is that kind of what happened with, with the company and starting out was you just, you know, once you identify this need and you see that you fix that, the view just keeps widening. It, it's, it's quite obvious at the moment that um, when we're doing great work and we're helping lots of people, both professionals, healthcare professionals and individual service users and, 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 uh, people at home and so on um, what comes out of that is you gain the trust of these people and once you gain the trust of those people they come to you with other challenges mm -hmm. and you know those products that I've just referred to have come out of conversations uh, um, the owner of the business went to go and visit uh, I think it was the deputy director of nursing at Imperial College Healthcare um, a number of years ago and um, she was very honest with him uh, uh, particularly around falls and said, look, you know, ultimately we are, we, we're not, we're not, in many cases, we're helping people and we're uh, making them better. But in many cases, we're not, we're doing the quite the opposite. And uh, falls are killing people. And it's, it's affecting uh, us operationally, it's affecting us mentally, it's affecting us financially. Uh, and that's obviously the secondary to the impact on the individuals uh, themselves, the service users and, and their families. Um, and she said, there's got to be a better way. There must be something we can do. And again, similar situation. He just went, leave it with me. I'm gonna see what I can do. And he's got one of those, he's very entrepreneurial. Um, uh, very, very passionate about wanting to help people. Um, and, uh, and he's one of those, I will make it happen. Uh, and that's exactly what he keeps doing. And I can see that happening in the future. Um, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a huge influx of, of business from care homes at the moment, support, um, funded by local authorities, so local government and clinical commissioning groups, they're called uh, over here in, in the UK, and they commission and pay for services not only from a person's perspective, so how it's going to affect the individual, but they're seeing the outcomes of using this technology on the wider system, the wider operational capacity and demand and finances and quality and safety and so on and so forth. So now we're having those, uh, those um, we're gaining those relationships at that level. And in Wales, we're talking to public health Wales and social care Wales at the very highest level. Um, so I can see there's going to be a lot more potential uh, work that we're going to do in the future um, in a similar vein. So it's quite exciting to be part of the team. Oh, definitely. I, I love change. I love innovation. Um, and I, I, love to, I love to work with people who believe 
you know, we can do better um, with all of this. So that is really neat. Have you seen an uptick in terms of people embracing your service because of COVID? And, you know, I know over here, we're short staffed, and they're looking at new ways to engage. Uh, Absolutely. Um, We I don't know whether you have the same in the States. uh, In in, it well, obviously, for us, the NHS and health and social care of the public sector. Uh, And in many cases, uh, the first thing uh, that they can grab hold of as a reason not to do something they'll grab hold of. Uh, um, so COVID was that, oh, we can't do it because of COVID. So it took us a bit of a, a bit of a while. It took us a good six, six, even to 12 months to <clears throat> educate a lot of these funders uh, on how much of an impact it will have during COVID. Um, and, and a lot of them have embraced it. And the stories we've heard about what a difference Rita has made uh, to them, uh, to, the, to, to the service. Obviously, like you said, a lot of them are limited with staff. Um, Rita really supports that. Um, and it's connected people to their families as well. You know, video calling is a simple concept, um, but what the NHS was doing over here, and they were doing it for good intentions and good reasons, um, they were investing in lots of iPads and uh, and sending them out to all of the care homes, which is wonderful. It's them getting free technology. The problem is there wasn't really any thought given to what they're going to do with the iPads. So in many cases, a lot of the iPads weren't used because people didn't know what to do, or how to use them. And, you know, they didn't have any apps to put on them. Um, in many cases, the iPads were too small to have video calls with family because people wanted larger screens. And uh, to you know, with uh, eyesight issues and hearing issues and so on and so forth, um, and ultimately, like I said, it was what do we do with them? So when we explained that actually you get at that functionality within Rita anyway as a standard, but alongside that you get all of this other content and capability to support the staff and the the residents and and, and patients and so on, that's when it clicked. Um, and obviously it also clicked from us being able to evidence um, a reduction in hospital admissions from care homes because of a reduction in falls. So Rita helps to contribute to a reduction of falls because people are kept stimulated during the day, they're kept entertained and calm, and they're not wandering with purpose, they're not wandering at night, which is one of the common issues with people getting out of bed in the middle of the night and falling. So that has a knock-on impact on hospital admissions. And because ours is publicly funded, um, capacity and demand is always a big issue. So waiting lists are a significant issue in the NHS. And we were able to demonstrate to them that we can help prevent avoidable hospital admissions from our most complex patients, our most complex um, residents. Because we all know, sadly, and it's a horrible stat, that dementia patients are significantly prone to uh, long stays in hospital and they're um, prone to uh, deteriorating in hospital and falling in hospital and many many don't make it through the other side Uh, and many of those admissions are avoidable so if we can play just a few little bits uh, of of, a part in that it's a huge thing and again, it's, it's not about the technology. The technology is great, don't get me wrong. It's change in behaviour, change in attitude, change in environment uh, and culture. And once people get that, and that's what we do a lot of is education and, and raising awareness, then the product does its thing. Because if you don't use it, you're not going to get the value from it. Yeah, I love that. I, I can see where that would help out so much with COVID. I'm wondering if if uh, staff, because I, I can see this not happening in some cases, but if staff let families know of this technology, so maybe families could send in photos or show, short videos that could be added into profiles. Or because I, I think a lot of times when something's new, they just kind of use the basics and and I don't know if they're short staffed over there, but they are very short staffed over here in the U.S. And so no added things, you know, typically, typically there's kind of a limit to what what people can do. But yet I see them as such a great value for reducing some of those unwanted reactions, you know, that are happening that, you know, they that mess up everybody's day. So if we can keep everybody in their comfort zone 
everybody has a better day. Things go smoother and more gets done. And that's the feedback we, we receive uh, uh, all the time. Uh, every, every week we're receiving new case studies and feedback because we always um, get feedback from all of the, uh, the deployments that we have. And, and that you just hit the nail on the head in terms of the environmental change uh, that it has um, if it's used appropriately. And what you asked about in terms of being able to get family members involved, absolutely. So you can send in um, images, um, you can send in, uh, so on. there's a photo board, a digital photo board. So if you've ever been in a care home, you'll see that they normally have photo boards of family members and you know important things to the individual. We have a digital version of that in Rita. So you can put, I think, up to 12 different pictures in, but within each picture, you can click on it and you can get family members to record a message for them. So if there's a picture of their son, their son can take uh, can uh, leave a recorded message for them. You can also add video to it as well. And that's the same in the life story uh, work as well. So people, family members can send information in uh, and that can support life story work and also just their general day-to-day -day, uh, support. Uh, and then finally, <clears throat> one of the other things that can be done incredibly well in the system is, uh, which I think is lovely, is, and it's basic. It's, you, you're probably on your iPad uh, or your tablet and done a digital jigsaw before. Um, so we have that in Rita uh, and it's defaulted to all of the reminiscence images. So I think, uh, I think the first one is Audrey Hepburn uh, and you do a jigsaw using, using her image, but you can get family members to send in their images as well. Uh, you can take images on, on the devices themselves of named nurses and their um, MDT teams and so on. And you can do, they can then build the jigsaw or do the jigsaw using those personal images. So it's all around personalization and making it important and uh, resonate with the individual, uh, not just in generically. So a question for you. I don't know if this does this, but I think it would be cool if it did. Um, is it possible for family to load like photos or video to have a private um, portal just for that, just to reduce staff's time in terms of gathering that stuff and inputting it? So um, there's two parts to this. So for Rita, the standalone uh, solution, we have integrated Teams, Microsoft Teams into it. So in theory, you can uh, start to transfer lots of different images and, and messages and so on in Teams via the, uh, via the device. So that's a kind of workaround uh, way of being able to deliver that uh, in, in our standalone Ritas. However, what we're working on at the moment is an online version of Rita, which will be slightly slimmed down because obviously we've got media licensing uh, restrictions on what we can do online. But there'll be a lot of content within Rita and some new content within Rita, uh, which also includes the ability for family members to have, you can have an account for each resident or patient and the family members can log in, leave video messages, leave documents, leave photos and so on, which can, uh, can be accessed by the, the individual themselves if they are independent enough to do that, but also by the staff being able to build uh, life stories for them. Oh, cool, that's neat. I'm wondering if you have some like video clips that you could show us, because I, I know some people are just listening to this, others are watching the video itself, but uh, some of us, it, it's just easier to understand when we, when we see it. Is that something that you could share with us? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got three videos actually that I'll show you. The third one, I won't show you all of it because it's about five minutes long, but it links back to our conversation about life story work. Okay. We've got a, um, a lovely, uh, one of our customers, in fact, a, a chap called Rob Grady, who works for Birmingham and Solihull Mental Health uh, Trust in, in the Midlands here. And he's an OT, uh, he's in the OT department, the occupational therapy department. And he's a master at life story work. He, what he doesn't know about life stories, God. So he very kindly gave us, um, uh, delivered two uh, free <coughs> uh, introduction to life story workshops for our customers. Um, and when I was um, preparing for all of that, he shared with me some video that he did with a lovely chap called Joe, who, uh, who had uh, advanced uh, stages, who was in advanced stages of dementia. He's sadly no longer with us, but um, Rob very kindly did a life story book for him and printed it out. And the video that I'll show you a portion of is, uh, is uh, Joe reading his life story for the first time. 
anyone that doesn't cry during that uh, will be uh, will be reprimanded. Um, <laughs> so this is Katie Pritchard, uh, who's the, uh, who was a ward manager. I think she's been promoted since then. Uh, ward manager at Imperial College Healthcare. Hello, my name's Katie Pritchard and I'm the ward manager of Albert Ward at St Mary's Hospital. We've been working with the My Improvement Network system since November. Um, which has been absolutely fantastic and we've seen huge improvements in the delivery of care for patients. It has an array of games, there's music, videos, BBC clips, My Life Story collage and a variety of activities to keep patients stimulated during the day so that actually they are sleeping during the night. We've seen a huge improvement in the stimulation of patients and keeping them awake during the day has really helped in their sleep-awake cycle. We found that a lot of patients were getting up at night time because they've been asleep during the day and this then puts them at high risk of falls trying to get out of bed and up mobilizing in the dark. We've actually reduced our falls by 50% in the last year which is an incredible achievement. We've managed to improve the quality of the ward and we've taken it from a white standard to a gold standard with our ward accreditation program in the trust which is an absolutely fantastic achievement for the patients and the staff funny story about that video uh, so the lady that you saw in, in the bed there the, the patient my uh, my colleague was there at the time uh, 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 with the filming uh, and apparently she took a call in between takes and uh, she said sorry I just need to get this this is my friend Michael and, and they didn't think too much of it it ended up being Michael Caine <laughs> <laughs> she's he's friends with Michael Caine apparently She's a, quite a wealthy, uh, wealthy woman. Uh, her husband was very wealthy and left quite a lot of money to Imperial College Healthcare as well. So uh, she's quite a well-known uh, person. But yeah, quite, quite a, a strange, <laughs> strange story. What you saw in the previous video was, uh, was Rita being used in, a, in an acute um, hospital uh, ward and it's used as I said in, in many hospitals but it is also used incredibly well in many many care homes across the UK. Now as I mentioned earlier on we're seeing a lot of investment and funding coming from commissioning clinical commissioning groups and local authorities local governments in uh, in England uh, and, and actually Wales. Um, now Ruth went to go and visit uh, her local acute hospital She's the clinical quality lead nurse at uh, North Tyneside CC CCG. Uh, and her, lo uh, her local acute hospital, um, actually, incidentally, is Northumbria Healthcare, and they're the ones that termed Rita Rita. Uh, so we've got to thank them for the, the, the name change. But she'd heard lots of good stories about Rita and the type of outcomes that were being experienced and lovely feedback. So she wanted to go and see it firsthand. She, quite frankly, she came back to the uh, the organisation and, and said, why in God's name have we not got this technology in our care homes? Because if they're experiencing these outcomes and this feedback, we can achieve the same in, in, our, in our care home community, which therefore will have a knock on impact on, on the impact on um, a secondary care as well. So this is Ruth and, and what she had to say after the event of, of investing quite heavily in uh, getting Rita into all of her care homes. We had seen Rita being used in the acute hospital and part of our quality monitoring when we go around the homes we identified there was a lack of um, activities going on within the homes so we thought it was a, an ideal opportunity. We had some funding um, that was available for investment so we decided that we would invest in buying a Rita system for each of our care homes. All of our homes have been using Rita really, really well. We've had great success. There's been some homes have identified reductions in falls. Some have been doing a little bit more meaningful activities with the residents. Um, families have been involved so that the activities that's been going on within the homes now are more um, personal centred and a more meaningful activity that the residents are receiving. I would recommend Rita to other CCGs and, and local authorities um, as part of their strategic vision for reducing hospital admissions, for reducing one-to-one -one and for reducing falls because um, I think at a strategic level we can, um, we can help reduce some of these within the care homes. So the third video is Joe. I'll play a bit of it. As I said earlier on, life story work is, is a passion of all of us at My Improvement Network. And uh, Rob Grady, who you'll hear in this video, he took the video and he produced the life story book for Joe. And incidentally, I should mention, we got two new workshops, uh, free workshops to, to be able to join in September. Um, so I'll, I'll happily share that with you, Laurie. And, and if there's any of your 
uh, listeners that would like to have access to that and they're up and about uh, over in the US, they're more than welcome to join that. It basically is um, Rob discussing the power and value of, of uh, life story work. And then the second session is dedicated to kind of giving some uh, examples and guidance on how to start and deliver uh, life stories. So it's definitely worth uh, attending if they can make it. Okay. Is this so, something I should have I should have asked before where you can do full screen on this? And then we won't see the the other videos kind of on the side there. there we go. Has that worked? Yeah. And, and, you know, I'd like to see this, but I'm thinking um, if I can get clips of this sent to me, it might be a little louder and easier to understand. Oh, that absolutely. I can send you the YouTube clips um, uh, straight away. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll send the links to it. It's not a problem okay. at all. Sounds good. So yeah, this is uh, this is Joe. Um, he, he, as, as I said earlier on, sadly he's no longer with us. And actually, at the time of his death, he had no other family members and no one who knew him other than the people that had been caring for him. So um, his life story book was used within his eulogy um, when he were uh, during his funeral. And it just goes to show that if that life story hadn't been produced for Joe no one would know about him no one would know about his background and uh, as you'll see it's um it's a lovely lovely uh, uh life that he's le led and quite colorful what can make you feel well i could never run into like this again no and uh, everybody that looks at it now well, really wants to look at it and some people might even get a double thing on it so do the like... staff and the nurses like to look at it they've gone mad would they uh, absolutely. Well, how marvellous. Uh, I mean, they all, yes, we can have a look today when I get down. Sometime. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it down and you can and you can show people. But oh. they enjoy looking through your books and looking at your life and finding out about you. Well, I do it myself as well. Yeah. I mean, even I look at the whole one that way there, I, I say to myself, well, how long is that one there? And of course, I knew Kenyatta very well, mm. and he's there. He is in there, yeah. And, and he was first up. He was. Uh, he died at uh, seventy-nine. Mm. No, I, I meant Gracie Fields. Oh, oh that's yeah. in the war when you when you met her at Rome. Oh, that yeah, story too. when you when you picked her up from the airport and you offered her a coffee. And she had a lot of, no, she didn't have that. What did she have? She had a big bottle and over to me on three. I'll have a triple gin. That's right. That's <laughs> what you got. You got it right. So about an hour later, she was trying to have a lot of a lie down. Yeah. And about eight o'clock or nine o'clock, she was ready to try and go into that place and learn a bit more from mm. the this. He, he played the dog. He went absolutely fantastic. And the place it was loaded with British and American sailors, and they all thought it was marvellous. And what did you say to her? Shall I show you the stage, wasn't it? To oh, you. to me? Yeah. Oh, she wanted me there, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I went to... Uh, can you did, remember yeah. what she said to you? You can you said, shall I show you the stage? And she said, oh, I don't need a stage. Oh, yeah. That's right. She walked down the great big step like this, stepped on the last step there. Yeah. Piano was there, and she went down there. She she wanted to stay. She didn't get it. She didn't want that. She wanted to sit on on the booth. sit on the step by the That's piano. The last one, and the pianist was there. And didn't she, you say that she that she that she also went into the cartwheel? Well, yes, she <laughs> did. I like this idea as well. She was up and doing something, did not she? Yeah, all your concert work. Mm. Look at that one there. Did you say it was that's beautiful? That's up there. <laughs> that's it. That was personal, that was done. But they all these did it. 44 people written all these. That's it. And they well done, you know. Well, like that. Oh, they're well done. I can't believe how good it is now. Oh, shit. Now, I know oh, what I'm doing in there. I'm laughing about it. I've got funny teeth, I think. <laughs> Where's this from? You're laughing somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a really nice photograph of you. That one. That's your piece out of the newspaper. 
Jolly Joe moves on. What, the film? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's well, that's piece. a wonderful idea. It's all beautifully. I don't know what that one is. That was on your 95th birthday. 95th? Yeah, last year. Be young, didn't I? You do. Let's have a look. Look at that. Look at that, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's what? one more there. There you are. Oh, oh, that's a good one. That's original. How did they get that? I'm supposed to get I that. know, made it a lot bigger. Yeah, because you know where that's from. It was from the, uh, to America. That's the, was, was that the ship you went on? Yeah, you know the one? It says there, Karen, Karenia. Yeah, I remember that. They did on that one. But I can't remember where they are, those kids there. Am I on there now or something you, like um, I doubt it. Yeah, there. Oh, I'm there on. you are. According to uh, to Rob, um, he Joe was very very distant and would would socially exclude himself all the time. He would never open up. He hardly ever spoke to anyone. He didn't. He got quite agitated quickly. And as soon as Rob started to talk to him about his past and learn more about it and show some interest, he just came out of his shell. He he just you know he wanted to share his life with everyone. Um, so that's that's the power of life story. It's the chase, the therapeutic part. Everyone loves re reminiscing, and especially about themselves. You know, when they think about their past, it's a lovely. It gives you a nice feeling. So, for those of you that want to look directly at the YouTube links, we have those on the show page and also on the blog embedded there. And I highly recommend that you take a peek at those and share those with others as well. What would you like your legacy to be? So in terms of legacy, uh, I think from focusing very much on um, what we're talking about here is I would like what we do as a business and what Rita delivers to create a, a bit of a shift in the way um, care is delivered to, um, to patients and residents in communities, uh, facilities, uh, care homes and so on. Um, and to see that there are alternative um, interventions, alternative ways of being able to deliver successful care. Um, and the reality is, it is about changing cultures, it's about changing environments, um, and, and really thinking outside the box. Because ultimately, mental health plays a significant part in our lives. Um, either negatively or positively. And for many people who are experiencing mental health issues, whether it's functional mental health, uh, dementia, uh, acute brain injuries and so on, they all are impacted by mental health issues. We all are at the end of the day. Now, one of the things that I would like to be able to, to change is for, for so, for instance, in the NHS here, I would like guidance, national guidance to be changed to ensure that um, uh, therapeutic activities, um, quality of life and well-being and mindfulness and so on is brought in as a standard into nursing care and clinical care. Because ultimately, no matter how great your clinical care is, no matter how great your operations are, if someone is experiencing stress and anxiety and their mental state is not good, they're going to take longer to recover or not recover at all. So if you take care of the clinical side and you take care of the, the mental health side, ultimately together, you get, it's going to lead to much better outcomes across the board. And that's not just in elderly care. It's not just in dementia care or mental health. This is in acute care and everywhere. If you want people to be out of hospital happier and happier with your organization as a service and safe, you need to treat their mental health just as importantly uh, as, as their, uh, the clinical interventions that you're gonna be giving them. So my hope is, legacy-wise, that what we're able to evidence and prove and showcase and educate people on through RITA will go on to support a change in guidance nationally here and hopefully elsewhere in, in, in the world, because it has to be addressed and it has to be addressed fairly quickly because the populations are getting bigger, mental health is getting worse. Um, you know, it's got to be taken care of. And if we can play one little part in changing that, 
the status quo, then we've done a good job. Yeah, well, and introducing it into the school system, you know, I mean, I think of the Olympics, you know, we've had some mental health issues there. And um, people shouldn't be embarrassed about that. You know, this is a condition that you know, everybody struggles with if they want to admit it or not at different levels. We're, we're just not all peachy keen and, and in, a, in good moods all the time. And so, you know, it, it's uh, it's kind of like dementia. I look at where we just we first have to get people to talk about it yeah. and to recognize that this is, you know, as they say with dementia, dementia isn't normal, but it is a normal part of life. Once it enters your world, you've got to adjust to it. And, you know, there are ways to deal with that in a healthier fashion that can reduce the effects and, and make people still feel like they belong and have purpose. And, and uh, so I, I think that would be a wonderful, wonderful legacy uh, for my improvement network to have on people. And I, and I think it already is in a lot of ways. So um, thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, for people listening, you can go to their website, which is myimprovementnetwork.com. And you can email Mike at mike.hamilton at myimprovementnetwork.com. They're also on Facebook. So just put in My Improvement Network and they'll pop up. Um, on Twitter, you can find them at Rita System. My Improvement Network, uh, search that on LinkedIn too. And I would love to see this come to the U.S. and for more people to know about this. I think this is a, you know, a, a fabulous products that you guys have developed. So kudos uh, to all of you. And um, I want to thank you also for being a member of Dementia Map too. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the more we can share what everybody is doing, the faster, you know, we're going to come to some better solutions in terms of working together. So we're not all trying to reinvent the wheel all the time. Anything I didn't ask you that you think people need to know about? Something that I wanted to add, it's linked to wh when you were talking about where Rita could be used. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you mentioned mentioned a, a different type. Oh, I said the police the could police use it. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So one of the things that um, links in very nicely with that is we are, I'm currently in conversations with Heathrow Airport. Uh, I was introduced to Heathrow Airport by Ian, who introduced us, uh, which was nice. Um, and uh, they are looking at uh, embracing Rita into the areas where passengers need support, whether it's dementia related, mental health related, learning difficulties and so on, that they have a special lounge where they would have Rita available for people to be able to access. I'm hoping to speak to some airlines in the not too distant future for individuals that may need it uh, when they're traveling, when things can get quite stressful for them. Um, but you talked about police. Um, we also, uh, or I'm having conversations with uh, uh, a number of organisations in Wales. I mentioned that it's used in Wales, all over the country in Wales. Um, we have it being used in many care homes in the community, uh, and we have it being used in the health boards, which are the multiple hospitals, acute mm -hmm. mental health and so on. So I've been having conversations also with Welsh Ambulance Service. So what we're looking to consider uh, or I'm, I'm promoting, is to do a pilot where we can have Rita accessible, which it already is in the care homes. So that's familiar to them. It's something that they see as a nice thing. Rita is someone they know or something they know. I want to see it in the ambulance services. So when they, they're being, if it's trans, uh, patient transport or blue light, they will have access to a baby Rita there. So it's something they know, it's something familiar. And it will be then available in the A&E department where we know it already works incredibly well. And then on into other settings, whether it's the acute geriatric ward or, or whatever. So the whole idea, the whole concept behind this is to provide digital continuity of care through the pathway to and from hospital. Ultimately, to keep them stimulated, calm, happy, as happy as they can be going to hospital and back again. So ultimately, they're there for the shortest amount of time and back to where they came from rather than what happens in the UK frequently is we call it delayed transfers of care mm -hmm. so when someone goes into hospital they get materially worse especially mentally and when they are due to be discharged 
they're told that they need one to one, two to one, three to one, whatever it may be. So then their care home go, well, we can't, we can't deliver that. So they end up going, well, where are we going to put these people? And in some cases, and it happened to my own mum, that they have to be put out of area. So rather than being in their local region, they have to go out of area because that's the only place that can commission their services. So it's all about working collaboratively together, integrated. And, um, I'm, you know, the next time we talk, hopefully I'll be able to showcase what uh, what the result is of that. But it can only be a good thing. Oh, that's neat. You know, the the um, Purple Angel MP3 is in a lot of the, the ambulance. And I mean, they've had great success just with giving people a little iPad and, and earbuds with this. And this gives them even even more. Uh, you know, choice with that. So I wish you all the best. I think this is really exciting. I, I think there's no limit to where this can be. And even you know, when you're talking to the, the um, airlines and things, this would be something that would be great just on the little TV sets for everybody, you know, to be, because there's a lot of nervous people on the plane. And I mean, you're reading every day, you know, how people are having difficult times and there's scuttles and all kinds of stuff and mental health issues, um, you know, on the plane. But I think of, you know, kids, adults um, alike, um, that could be very, very helpful. And I know our group here in Minnesota um, is on the international group, you know, working with the airports and things too. So, so that's exciting. I've kind of stepped back a little bit from, from that just because my schedule doesn't accommodate it anymore, but um, it's been really fun to, to watch and see how that is um, working or, you know, it might even be kind of neat to see if uh, even in the new car systems, who knows? Well, thank you again, um, Mike, for your time. I really, really appreciate it so much. And I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. For those of you listening, you know, don't keep this a secret. Share, 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 share. Um, that's how we make the world a better place. So thanks, everybody. Have a, have a blessed day. Bye now.